Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, my name's Emma Tamsin Hill and today we're doing a video that I have not made in a very long time and it is a cooking video because you guys seem to love these. So stick along for the ride and I'm going to show you some recipes I've been making recently. The first thing we're going to make is spiced roasted cauliflower. So I've just got some in a baking tray here. Add all your spices in. You can pretty much add anything that you like. I just do olive oil so the seasoning sticks to it. Salt, pepper, turmeric, paprika, you know, all that fun stuff and roast it for around 35 minutes i'm also making a tzatziki to go with it because this day it was really hot i think so i had some like mediterranean inspired dinner so i'm grating some courgette here i also used the oatly creme fraiche which is so good it's a nice dairy-free alternative if you're vegan or anything like that so you want to get the courgette sliced super thin and then add that to your creme fraiche kind of mix and then obviously season it salt pepper a little bit of olive oil all that good stuff also don't forget a little squeeze of lime this adds a nice little tartness to it that's gonna be really nice with your meal I also grilled some courgette to go along with this dish. So I'm just cutting that up here. I use like a nice big ridged frying pan. I don't even know what you call that. So it makes some nice lines on the courgette. You know, I'm all about the aesthetics. So right here, I'm making some coconut flatbreads. So I actually didn't have enough plain flour for this. So I used coconut flour, which is what gave it the coconut kind of flavor. But I should have used more plain flour because they didn't stick together that well because obviously the coconut flour, it's not really that binding. So yeah kind of messed up here but i managed to salvage it also guys obviously i'm not really talking through everything here but all the recipes and the methods will be in the description box so if you want to make anything that you've seen in this video go down there and you can make it all So now I'm just taking my cauliflower out, shake it up a little bit. I love it when it goes crispy on the top. That's honestly the best. And I'm putting in the leaves here from the cauliflower. So you might throw these away, but keep them and put them in your roasting tin in the last 10 minutes of cooking and they go nice and crunchy. You can have them alongside your dish. So this is my first flatbread. As you can see, it's in the pan here and it was a fail. It literally ripped right in half. But waste not, what not, I'm gonna salvage it and I'm still gonna cook it. I always feel like the first one that you make is bad. Like with pancakes, all that stuff, the first one never works. But, you know, got a little nice color to it, which is what we want. And this is the final dish. So this was honestly really, really nice. I really enjoyed it. I always love a bit of cauliflower and I do have another cauliflower recipe in this video. My friends always laugh at me because they say all I eat is cauliflower, but I promise I don't. I just love a bit of it. Now, on this day, I made some cashew milk. I have never made any kind of nut milk before, but I just thought I'd give it a go because it's looked super easy to make. So I'm just soaking my cashews here. You're going to want to do that for at least two hours so they can soften up and then you can blend them together. So I'm just draining it off here and then I'm gonna put it in a blender with some more water. And literally just blend it from there. And then what you're gonna need is a muslin cloth for this because you strain it through that as well. I'm literally gonna use a hair bubble to go over the top of here. You know, guys, I'm not professional. We all know this. So I'm putting a hair bubble over it to keep the cloth in place. But I started sieving it through and I started using my fingers at first, but that was kind of messy. So I decided to get a spoon to kind of push it through. So you're going to end up with like a bit of pulp, I would say, that's left in the muslin cloth that is obviously too thick to make an actual milk. I feel like I probably should have tried to, to like sieve it a bit more and get more of that pulp through because in the end, my milk ended up being a little bit bland. So I could have done a little, it was a bit watery, you know what I mean? But I'm so proud that I even made this because I've never made anything like this before and it was actually really easy. It is just a little bit time consuming. I also made a variation of this. So I made a little bit of chocolate milk as well, just for, you know, a little bit of fun. So what I put in that was a scoop of cocoa powder and a medjool date. So that is gonna add a little bit of natural sweetness. If you want to, you can do maple syrup or honey or whatever you might wanna put in it. But this was honestly really good. If you're into like chocolate milk, that kind of stuff, I'm sure you could make banana, vanilla, whatever you wanted to. But this was just really easy to mix with like my pre-made milk. 
again you just want to blend that all together so it can combine properly this Nutribullet is honestly be the best thing that I've ever owned my friend Evie was over so you know I let her taste test it and she liked it I got the approval that I needed This next recipe is a super easy creamy cauliflower soup and it doesn't take very long at all to make and it is so delicious. So I'm just cutting up my cauliflower here. I'm putting it in a roasting tin. Again, with a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper and also I put a bit of paprika, I think. But you don't have to go mad on the spices right now because when we combine it all together with some stock and other things, it is going to be super, super tasty. So again, roast that for around 35 minutes. So it's just a little bit crisp on top. I'm also going to cut a red onion up and fry that off in a pan. Again, some olive oil, salt, pepper. Guys, don't forget to season your food, please. I'm begging you. And then my camera was dying, so I was super fast with all the clips because I didn't want to miss any little bits. So I also made some stock. I used the North stock pots. They're so good, honestly. Just the vegetable one with some boiling water. Put it in the pan with the red onion so it can like all bubble up together and then when your cauliflower is done you can take that out of the oven and put it in the pot as well because you kind of want all the flavors to like marinate together and combine together then this is very important make sure you let it cool before you put it in your blender because sometimes we can have explosions that is not what we want that is not all good all right so put it in your blender a squeeze of lemon juice and a little bit of um, cream i'm just using that elmerly plant cream Guys, people still ask me if I'm vegan, but I don't, I did veganuary, but I mean, I'm a bit more of a flexitarian these days, I would say. The squeeze of lemon really, really like adds to the flavor so much. So don't forget that part and yeah, mix that all together. And that is super simple. It's literally, that's it. And I just put it in my Tupperware and I had it for my dinner. Lastly, I'm going to show you some super easy breakfast that you can prep like the night before and they're going to be good to go in the morning. So I'm making some overnight oats here. So I literally just put in some milk, some rolled oats, a little bit of Greek yogurt, vanilla extract or I'm using paste here um, and a little bit of honey. I'm going to make them chocolate and peanut butter. So I'm going to add some cocoa powder and some peanut butter to the mix too. Also some chia seeds to add like a little bit of texture a little bit of thickness thicken it all up in there then i'm just going to mix all that together and once it's combined just put it in you can put it in tupperware i decided to put it in this little bougie glass container thing and in the morning you can add whatever you want to it so i just added some raspberries on top and a little drizzle of honey and i was good to go i just love it because it doesn't take very long to prep and all the work is done for you overnight when it marinates together so you literally just have to grab it and go in the morning because i often don't have a lot of time so this stuff really helps and then i'm also going to show you how to make this chia seed pudding again this literally takes two minutes to make so i'm just putting some oat milk into a tupperware i'm doing it in a tupperware because this makes two portions and i can just you know portion it out on the day that i want to eat it oat milk in there and then some chia seeds and then i put a little bit of honey and a little bit of vanilla extract again because i add adds a little bit of flavor because the chia seed does not have any flavor so make sure you mix that really well make sure every seed is coated because when they are they need to puff up, so they need to be in liquid to make the pudding. That's what I did, leave it overnight. And then the next morning, I added some blackberries. I got these huge ones from the market. And I also added some pumpkin seeds, some pistachios, and a little drizzle of honey again. And it was so nice. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed these easy, quick recipes. Let me know if you want to do more of these. A lot of you guys ask about my cooking. Let me know down below if you liked it. And I will see you on the next video, guys. Bye.